Let's build a home recording studio from scratch. Step by step, take notes. Step 1. Pick a space. If you're a self-producing songwriter, an electronic music artist, or need a recording space to only record vocals, guitar, keyboards, and other individual instruments with only one or two people performing. At a time, a regular sized spare room or bedroom will suffice. While choosing a space to record, remember two things. Avoid low ceilings and square rooms. If you're stuck with a low ceiling, acoustically treating the ceiling becomes necessary, budget for the additional expense. Step 2. Piece together a PC. We'd recommend investing in a high-performance computer with a 64-bit operating system. It has to champion a significant amount of tracks, plugins, and sample libraries without choking up. Budget for it generously and buy the best you can afford at the given moment. As a baseline, I recommend a computer with at least 8GB RAM and a 4-core processor. It's also worth optimizing your computer for music production. Storage. SSD or HDD. Dealing with audio can rack up a lot of files over time. Start with 1TB of internal hard drive space and add more external drives later. For the sharpest performance, use a solid-state drive SSD, as the primary OS drive, with a hard disk drive HDD, for secondary storage. A dedicated graphics card is non-essential if you only work with audio. Cost-effective tip. Custom versus pre-built versus Mac. If you are looking at Macs, you should throw, on a budget, out the window. We're talking anything between $1,300 and $2,000 depending on your configuration. Building a custom PC by sourcing individual parts gives you multiple options. It works out cheaper than buying pre-built systems. With the above configuration, you could build the right computer for less than $1,000. I only advise laptops, with a 15-inch screen, if you value portability and or need it, to double up for live performances. Step 3. Choose an audio interface. An audio interface acts as the intermediary between the analog realm of sound and the digital realm of your computer. Your choice of an interface must factor how many inputs you need or how many sources you plan to record at once. Audio interfaces vary primarily in terms of the number of inputs and outputs. More inputs mean more sources, instruments or microphones, can be recorded simultaneously. Step 4. Pair it with studio monitors. Studio monitors are designed to be sonically flat or neutral, meaning that no frequencies are artificially boosted or cut. Good reference speakers will make a noticeable difference to your home recording studio, more so if you plan to mix and master in a home studio setup. Monitors are typically classified in terms of the size of the driver, ranging from 3 or 4 inches up to 10 or 12 inches. Lower frequencies, however, can tend to become problematic in untreated or small rooms, so bigger doesn't necessarily mean better for your purposes. Step 5. Digital Audio Workstation DAW. When it comes to door, in the context of pricing, you have three choices. Free doors. This refers to any door offered as a free version such as Audacity, GarageBand, and Cakewalk by BandLab. Limited functionality doors. Doors offer a free trial period via trial versions to test the software before you commit to buying it. Many audio interfaces include a light version of a digital audio workstation like Ableton, Cubase, or others. Paid doors. Pro-grade doors include Florida Studio, Reaper, Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic Pro 10, among others. They differ in features, workflow, and pricing. Ableton Live and Florida Studio are optimized for electronic or sampled-based production. Logic Pro 10 is a no-brainer if you are on a Mac system due to its rich feature set. Budgeting for a door. As far as pricing goes, Reaper is the cheapest full-fledged door available at $60 for a personal, small business license, with the caveat that it doesn't come with any bundled virtual instruments. Logic Pro 10, Studio One, Cubase, Florida Studio, and Ableton Live are priced between $200 and $500, standard versions, with Logic and Florida providing free upgrades. 
It is a difficult choice for new budget-conscious home studios. If you like the content remember to click the like and subscribe button. Step 6. Load the microphones. Every studio needs at least one or two microphones to record audio, especially vocals, acoustic guitar, and other instruments. A workhorse would be dynamic mics like Shure SM57, SM58, or Audio-Technica AT202. These are tried and tested classics that yield good results with practically anything you throw at them. All these mics cost around about $100. As we've mentioned, the Evo Start Recording Bundle includes a condenser mic that sounds great and is perfect to get you started in home recording. Step 7. Headphones and Amplifier. Good cans are essential for monitoring or as a second reference while producing or mixing. A flat sound ensures accurate reproduction without adding its own EQ or enhancements. Additionally, they should be flexible and must seal firmly around your ears. Ergonomic designs are essential to avoid pain or discomfort after prolonged usage. A good seal, on the other hand, prevents leakage, bleed, into the microphone when you record. Step 8. Get a MIDI keyboard. Apart from just playing virtual instruments, MIDI keyboards are useful for production tasks like triggering automation, samples, patch changes, and a lot more. The flexibility of MIDI in post-production means you can edit, correct, and layer performances as required. Step 9. Consider room treatment. Whether you're recording through a microphone or mixing a track, your biggest enemy is the sound reflecting off walls and other surfaces. Room treatment involves using special materials to minimize these reflections. Bass frequencies tend to be the most problematic to control in small rooms. To combat this, Panels of absorptive material like foam panels, rock wall, or glass wall can be placed in strategic positions to minimize low-end reflection. Widely available acoustic foam is also useful to control reflections of higher frequencies. A combination of high and low frequency absorption materials can be used to deaden a room in a balanced way to ensure maximum neutrality. Although ready-made room treatment kits are available, I highly suggest sourcing raw material and hiring a local carpenter to build custom treatment for your room. This usually works out much cheaper while also being tailored to your specific space. Step 10. Round it up with cables and hardware. Among the essentials, you need a pop filter for condenser mics and a microphone stand. Pop filters are important when you are recording vocals using a condenser microphone. Final thoughts. My motive, with this post, was to highlight how you can save money and build a studio to achieve great recordings within a reasonable budget. Watch this video to learn how you can blow up with your next release. Thanks for watching.